Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So this is a garage update video. I just want to thank everybody that's watched the video of the build last year. It's been a year, can you believe it? But in that year, I've lived with a garage. So let's see what's good with it, what's bad with it, what I've done to improve it, and the future plans for this garage. Let's go. All right then guys, so a year in the life of my garage. Uh, first and foremost, I'm gonna apologize for the sound if it's not great. Uh, I'm, I'm currently using a new camera setup, so I'm just gonna see how this works. Uh, so yeah, you'll have to let me know if it's terrible. But yeah, I'll keep going. Um, so I've been asked, really, I mean, those that are in the UK will understand and know. We don't have much space here. Um, so I've what I've done with this garage is I've tried to utilize it and I've had a lot of questions on what I've done with upstairs and also you know how I sort of utilize the space so I'll give you a quick tour um, first and foremost is the attic now I say the attic the loft space I put a hatch in there I showed it in the build video um, that was put up there because now again it's right by the door which can be a bit of a pain but but hear me out the only other real sort of place I could have put it would be over in this side which would be above there because again you need access to get to the center if it was there, as you can see, I've got my jet ski, which doesn't leave much room, um, life jackets, and every time I'd sort of have to get up there, I'd have to move the jet ski, and yada, yada, yada. Same on this side. If I'd have put it on this side, I've got all my workbenches, I'd have to move stuff. So it just made sense. Now people will say, well, there's a door there, Lee, you're gonna get like smashed in the face or whatever. But it's easy, just, just lock it. No one can come in. And generally it's just going to be being here anyway so uh, yeah so in terms of space then so people are saying what about the IKEA cupboards now I use them such a way now I might be a bit OCD but all my jet ski products appear so like oils spark plugs gloves keys yada 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 um, for the locks uh, all keeps on that shelf then I've got all my oils and greases cleaning gear equipment empty fuel cans compressor axle stands and so on and so forth and then in terms of the other cupboard I use this just for spare bits really it's kind of like a household one so I've got paint I've got all my sort of like paint brushes silicons all that sort of stuff cleaning gear I mean I could put like my toolbox in there or my other tool kit in there but I don't there's, there's no real need it sits on top of the shelf nicely same with like all the wheel clamps extra stuff and then I keep my cups in here sort of out of the way my T-boat area, which is mega, and then my fridge. Uh, not very full at the minute, to be fair. Needs uh, needs filling up, but summer is coming. So, yeah, and in terms of the space that I use down here, um, these IKEA units, which I've mentioned to other people, they're, they're fantastic. Um, you know, again, all sorted out. So everything I need to put in there, like locks, and I've got all my car bits and bobs, you know, buffers stuff for the hose for the jet ski and the air compressor and then over on this one i've got like nuts and bolts all my wall plugs and drill fittings and yeah everything electrical stuff and tape and then you might notice these hooks people have asked me about these hooks they're actually tire hooks they're designed to put like alloy wheels or tires on them but i use them for life jackets scooters and the reason these four here is for the seats so when i work on a jet ski do servicing on it whatever i can hang the seats up and they're out of the way then they're not on the floor they're not you know because again not much space and you know by opening up this space by moving the jet ski over gives me more work, room to work if i was to center it yes i could get around it but again you'd have to sort of shimmy around when you're opening the drawers <laughs> I, you know those guys in the uk small garages or anyone with a small space will sort of understand that so and then as i mentioned before i'll show you it in operation but the garage door now because of the original one being here i've managed to gain a bit more space because um i have a massive jet ski i could get a smaller one but this is a three-person jet ski so you know rod for your own back and all that sort of stuff so yeah it works it's great problems i've had with it well the biggest problem i've had it's the uk so it gets cold it gets damp so what i've done to mitigate that is i mentioned it in the build video but never actually showed you it is i've got insulation and some storage up there so i'll take you up there in a minute 
but I've got like a, a small wireless heater which is great you can turn it on for 20 minutes a day and it just warms it through and with the insulation and the garage door and the flooring and all that sort of stuff it it's never really that cold I think on the coldest day this year it was maybe minus one and in the garage I managed to maintain a temperature of about eight or nine degrees so Celsius so that was really good um, it, it just works for me the insulation probably helped a lot and the fact that you know we we do live on the seaside it is a little bit windy but with the new garage door the floor in the insulation all that I mean it's not perfect by any stretch it's not a house you know you've got to remember that and I struggle to remember that and I'll sort of come on to one of the major problems I've had again which sort of comes to the UK weather now where my house is now this is actually my house here and then this is outside I'll show you on the outside what it is I'll show you how it works do, 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 do. so as you can see there's a house there and then obviously this is a single wall and it obviously goes round and it joins onto another garage next door which is great so you get essentially you get uh, oh, apologies for the lighting so which is great so that wall is fantastic it's got another uh, bit of landing bit of land bit of house there that's great because it's part of the house but this corner here and this corner here is single walled so it's a real problem now those that have been in the uk this year have seen we've had horrendous rain um so what was happening was i got a, a couple of guys in to have a look at it but basically what was happening was um because it's a single skin wall it was just soaking up so much moisture to the point where it was actually running down the insides of the wall here so i went into a massive meltdown went up in the loft part i was like oh my god what is it but actually all that was dry it was just the bricks the bricks were just soaking it was like driving rain on on onto the brick so i tried a couple of products a couple of things i checked all the gutter in i checked internally i, I checked everything and it just turns out that well apparently i mean you guys might tell me differently but apparently this is quite common um so what i did was and i'll, I'll leave a link for it but i'll point to up here somewhere and i'll put a picture of it i use this um yeah, to be honest it was like toothpaste but it's called storm dry and you, you literally just brush it on brush it on brush it on there's loads of videos online about it. i did a bit of research and i applied that one day i didn't take any videos of it unfortunately but i applied that and jesus but it was fantastic it really was it, it's been abs it's it's literally it's it's um i can't remember the name of it but it's basically it's water repellent so when it rains it just literally creates like a like a skin and they've got like a 10 year warranty on it absolutely amazing uh since then we've had loads and loads of rain and it's been bone dry inside absolutely bone dry and the water just sort of beads up on the outside and runs down um amazing stuff really if you've got a single sort of garage or you know something like that or it's exposed to the weather i mean it was quite expensive i think it was like about 100 pounds for a five liter tub that just covered the space i needed which was great but i would seriously recommend it it's amazing and you know if you've got stuff like for instance my biggest worry was all the electrical sockets um and the tv i went granted but i didn't want any sort of soak in and i was like all the electrical sockets and i was like oh my god oh my god but yeah since then touch wood it's been absolutely amazing um and well worth the money in my opinion definitely worth doing so yeah so in terms of space that's well in terms of a cons or cons i'd say that's really about it um standard uk weather and you know a bit of leakage but again it's all basically boiled down to the weather and i mean it's a uk climate so i mean what you're gonna do uh so yeah let's move on to upstairs i'll show you that luckily for me i'm quite tall so i can get to it so the hatch comes down easy peasy just like that we've just painted it black as well and then i've got a ladder again thankfully i'm quite tall comes down it's on rails fixed in place ideal I've locked the door so no one can get in but as you can see it comes down it's in the right place there's nothing to move great stuff all right guys so up in the loft there's the access that comes up so 
So straight up here, ladder folds away to where I am at. I've got a motion activated light, which comes on as soon as it senses motion, it stays on for about 30 seconds. But if you're up here long enough, you know, you just wave it, it comes back on. And I've got things stirred up here like gazebo, my old toolboxes, my old uh, truck lights. But as you can see, I've only really used the center part portion of it. I've only boarded out the center portion of it. Uh, that's purely because that's what worked for me now. I mean, let's be honest, you can't really do a lot under there anyway. But what you can get is between these, you can get like railing systems which go across. And you could fit three or four of them in there, put some drawers in and you can make this even tidier. But this works for me. I mean, plenty of storage space. I mean, you could put garden stuff up here, garden furniture up here. You could put more toolbox up here. That's only taken, I would say about half the space of the loft if that um and that's just because i've piled things on top of each other but you could you could easily utilize this for a lot more stuff uh the access panel is big enough to get everything in and out of as well and then like you say it's well like i've said it's insulated all the way around uh now i use this insulating stuff here it comes in packs i think of like eight sheets so this took me like two and a half um so i think they're 40 pounds uh, a, a packet so you know, I use two and a half, so a hundred pound, but it's 120 pound and you just slot them in. They all slide in and you can, it's a hundred mil thick insulation. So it really does work. Uh, this is standard loft MDF. Now full disclosure, I didn't do this myself. I've got a company in, uh, they came in, I insulated as much as I could of it. They then come and put this in and then I insulated the rest of it when I could reach across. Now, I don't want to put more weight on it, but it works for what I do. So yeah, um, and to be honest, I'm not going to do any more to it. It it works and it's great. Need to be taller. Ta-da! Couple of things have been mentioned. Um, I mean, the TV was one. Now, was that a good idea? Oh look, doing the same. Is that a good idea? Uh, six of one, half a dozen of the other. Now, to be honest, do I use it? Not really. Um, is it a bad idea? Not really. It's all down to personal preference. Uh, to be fair, on the times that I have been in here for extended periods, I've put you know music on in the background through the TV. So, I mean, you could get away with maybe a smart speaker or, or something like that. Or, you know, when I'm doing work on the jet ski, if I'm doing anything like in depth, um, you know, I've got a manual. I sometimes bring my laptop in, but you can put it on a TV. It, it's all down to preference. I mean, look, it, it's just another feature, isn't it? You can either yay or nay it. But just just another question that was put to me. Um, I don't know, it, it, it's not good, it's not bad. It, it is what it is, but that's that's all down to you. You know, depends what you're doing in your garage, depends, or your man cave or whatever, or your, you know, whatever you want to put in it, it's your choice. And that was my choice. I don't regret it. Um, you know, it, it looks great and it, it works well. So I was a bit worried about the winter time, but I think with the insulation, the door and everything, it's not been a problem. The TV's been great, even when it was like cold, cold outside. Like I said, because of the heater I've got in here, only a little one, it, it never got cold, cold. So, you know, great stuff. But yeah, TV, yay or nay. So as I've mentioned before guys, look, if I'm doing work on the jet ski, I can hang the seats up there. They're, I've measured them up so they fit perfectly. Typically me, I forgot which one goes on which and struggled, but that's just me being daft. And then look, if I need to get any tools, you know, I'm in. And the engine base here, no problems. What the hell was that? Bruh. There you go, look, see, still gives me room to play. It, it works perfectly for my needs anyway. So just, um, I thought that was a great idea because I've seen jet ski seats fall on the floor, get damaged. You know, they're not, they're not um, indestructible. They're fine on water, but they don't do very well with concrete. So just, just a tip, just a tip. And again, same for the life jackets. 
they can get damaged so they're good if they just hang up and then you know you can work on this for those that want to know um or were interested it's a 1.6 or a 1630 uh, advanced combustion engine uh supercharged 230 brake horsepower top speed with my weight 64 miles an hour so maybe i need to lose a bit of weight and maybe get 65 but pretty hairy on the water so even though it's a three-seater i mean jet skis nowadays are mad you've got 325 brake horsepower on like a was it 1650 Whoa, ridiculous 70 80 miles an hour and then you've got tuners that that put i think there was one i saw the other day 93 miles an hour that's just scary and i know that there are some that go over this is just the one guy that i've seen but yeah, so it's great for working. The garage has worked really well for me. The garage door. Now, you can do it via remote or you can do it via this. So, open. Whoa. Look at that. Well, maybe it's a bit too cold, so just stop it. Put one of these in your car, ideal, if you ever need to come in the garage. And there you go, it opens fully. Now I got asked um, recently about the garage being on the outside, because if you remember from the original video, I had water coming in here. Now I've just painted this, I haven't done anything with it, uh, which I'll explain later why. But because the garage, now go, garage door now goes on the outside, it basically sits on this drain. So any rain that comes in, drives against the garage door on the outside and just rolls into there. So I've had this fitted and we've had terrible weather here in the UK over the winter time and bone dry so that is definitely a perk because you can't really see it on camera but I mentioned before that my garage is wonky um you know wonky in terms of the walls but what it also is is it sits on a slight slope so it sort of goes now if you can't really see it but it kind of goes from there and it drops down about 15 millimeters 20 millimeters that way which isn't a great deal however what that used to do was the rain would come in and because the garage floor is slightly squiffed as well it would just roll in and you know there'd be a big puddle all down here so that's stopped that now and what happens when the garage door goes down is if you can see it goes all the way down and then what it does is it touches this side first bang and then look you see it it touches that side it comes all the way down and then it'll stop and you can probably see it a bit better now on an angle because it's obviously lower down it's sort of pushed down in there but it is no problems i mean they're designed to do this anyway the guy who come to fit it in the company like yeah no problems it is what it is they've set it up to run where it runs and yeah it, it it's perfectly fine now i generally stop it before it goes to its full travel i'll wait till it touches the floor and then just stop it but that's just a personal preference. You can just do it however you want. But yeah, the garage door for those that, you know, are thinking about it, highly, highely recommend getting a garage door, a roller garage door fitted. A, for the space, B, for the aesthetics, and C, it's pretty cool, isn't it? When you come up with your little beeper and beep, when your garage door opens, pretty cool. So with the jet ski pulled out obviously much much bigger much much more space yeah i mean smaller jet ski would be really good in here but as you can see or as you've seen it's a bit awkward because of the way i do it i have to sort of come in at an angle but again i could come straight in and you know there'd be no problems with space but just it'd be just a bit of a pain to work so that's the reason i put it over here one thing that is sort of i'm not knocking the company it's great but again a year of using something uh, where obviously I parked the jet ski on these PVC tiles, it has left marks. Now these, I haven't probably cleaned them properly, but I've given them a wipe down and that's that's stained. Um, so if you get this floor with a car, I would suggest, I would suggest a darker color um, personally. Now, again, not necessarily a con, you know, it's plastic. I mean, the jet ski weighs three, 400 kilograms plus the trailer. You know so it's gonna imprint it over time so that's what it looks like after a year i mean but apart from that i mean the floor 
floor's banging. I mean, I got a tile, they did a, an extra tile for me, which I really like. Now, if you're putting your car in here, I would suggest a dark color. That's just from using it. I mean, look, it's it's plastic. It's 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 going to do that, I, you know, but for the price of it, I mean, if it was epoxy flooring, like I mentioned in the other video, if it was epoxy flooring, then I'd be mad that I'd spent all that money and it was marked, you know, we said what four or five grand these cost a couple of hundred quid and to be fair if it is annoying after a year the tiles are really inexpensive so you can just go buy a few more you know so look <laughs> apart from from that the floor is fantastic it keeps the dust down it's just really good so i'm not knocking it i'm just letting you know T, t butt area does it work yeah it's great you know again nice little novelty item but you know my kitchen is is just there so <laughs> it was something i i decided to put in whether it's good or it's bad it it, it works you know I've, I've made a few cups of tea there i've made a few coffees it's great i could have walked 12 more feet and gone in the kitchen and done it but it's just one of them things again you don't have to do that you could maybe put something else in that position this is how I've used it. And again, it's what works for me and what works for me might not work for everybody else. So my main thing was the space that I had available to utilize it the best I could for what I was doing. And, and it works. I mean, even to the point where I've, you know, hooked everything up, my little dustpan and brush, my brush is all there. Everything's all away and nice. Uh, even though it's a little bit of a mess today, it's, it's still tidy and it looks a damn sight better than it did when I first moved in and it works a damn sight better than I did when it first worked it, uh, moved in and I think that's it really you've just got to work with what you've got and do what you can um, fortunately for me I'd just sold a house previously so I had a bit of spare cash to do it and I understand that a lot of people you know don't have a lot of money for these sorts of things now I always had the intention of doing this um, so it, it, it works for me now like I said in the previous video, the build part of it, if you had everything, you know, really what you're gonna spend the money on, you know, maybe a new light, um, a bit of paint to sort of do it, you know, and I, I try to explore the cheaper options as well. Uh, and there are even cheaper options, you know, you can buy everything secondhand or you didn't, I, you know, I didn't have to put the floor tiles in. Um, I could have painted it and that would have been cheaper, you know, what, 25 pounds for, a, $30 for a big tub of paint, polyurethane paint would have done the job. So again, everything is down to everyone's preference. I just hope that I've given some guys some good ideas anyway. That's the main thing. Um, I just hope I can help people out and I, I really appreciate the comments, which has been fab. Uh, and the only thing that I'm a little bit disappointed or I say disappointed about, it's not really disappointed, but sad about is the loft space. I mean, it's great and it works and it, it's perfectly suitable, but um i've stopped work on the garage now for for reasons um well I'm, I'm moving so all that work for a year um but it was my choice to move now me and the wife of well i say i've decided and i'm dragging the wife along with me uh we're gonna go abroad so that doesn't mean the odd jobs will stop it just means that there'll be different content and it might be a little bit more spaced out than it already is but we, look we do this for fun we really enjoy it we have got more videos coming, don't worry. We've got more reviews on some sweet cars as well. Sam's been lining up some really good ones. Um, and yeah, it's amazing. This video, or not this video, but the build video has been our most successful video and I'm just doing it as a bit of fun, you know, and it's great. And, and hopefully I'll have another garage build video coming soon and a house build video or a house renovation video or or whatever it is I decide to move into. But we'll 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 get to that when we get to that. But yeah. So um stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Please if I've missed any of your comments or any questions that you I haven't answered or any thoughts that you might have had, please, please, please leave a comment. Feel free. I try my absolute best to reply to every single one. Uh even if you don't agree with me, I'm 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 quite an open guy. So don't worry about it. Don't worry, you can't offend me. I've got thick skin. But yeah, thanks for watching. Um, see you in the next one very, very soon. To half an hour. Uh, yes, they are slippers. Um, for that, my GoPro's just turned off. Fantastic. 
Um, the rebuild video. So in terms of my cleaning stuff, I might have gone a little bit overboard. Um, Whoa.